Thank you for watching this Workplace Learning Connection presentation. When you think about careers in healthcare, people often immediately think of doctors and nurses, but there are so many other careers available in the healthcare industry. Professionals in this industry provide a range of diagnostic, technical, therapeutic, and support services in connection with healthcare. They often work within multidisciplinary health teams to provide the best patient outcomes. In this video, you'll get a quick introduction to a variety of healthcare careers. We will focus on four specific careers, physical therapists, occupational therapists, radiologic technologists, dentists, and chiropractors. This video gives a high level overview of these careers. If any of these careers spark your interest, you can view the speaker's full presentation by going to our YouTube page, Workplace Learning Connection Kirkwood. Let's start off by learning about careers in physical therapy. Um, so what does a physical therapist do? Physical therapists are movement experts who improve quality of life through prescribed exercise, hands-on care, and patient education. Physical therapists help patients achieve their movement goals. The goals can be um, a high-level athlete trying to improve their game all the way to a baby trying to hold its head up, anything in between. So there's a lot of different types of PT. So uh, if you've ever had an injury, you might think of that classic outpatient practice. You're also going to have an inpatient setting. So that means you could work in the ICU, work with post-op patients, work in acute care. You also can work in a skilled nursing facility. You can be home health, work with pediatrics. There's different kinds of rehab facilities. And then there's even PTs in an emergency room setting. There's also women's health, vestibular, aquatic therapy, and working with athletes as well. How does one become a physical therapist? Well, you're going to need your four-year bachelor's degree. You can really major in anything, much like going into med school, but you will need some specific classes completed in order to be um, admitted into physical therapy school. Um, you, you're going to have to accumulate some observation work or volunteer hours of some sort in a physical therapy setting. You have to apply to BT, PT school. That process is kind of a long um, application. And then you have to take your GRE, which is like a, a grad school entrance exam, much like the ACT to get into college. Then you go into graduate school. You'll become a doctorate of physical therapy. So that's the DPT. Graduate school is usually two and a half to three years. Most of um, graduate school is only two and a half. Um, you have mostly in-class work and then some clinicals scattered throughout, uh, most of them being at the end of your class time. Clinicals is where you are paired up with a real live working physical therapist and you're working alongside them, seeing patients, writing documentation, and basically learning how to become a physical therapist. At the end of that, you take a licensure exam. It's about a four-hour test, give or take. And then if you pass, you're, you're a licensed physical therapist. There's also different career paths. So I'm a physical therapist, but you can also be a physical therapy assistant. And that is going to be a two-year degree, a two-year associate's degree right now. The difference is that uh, PTAs or those assistants cannot do initial evaluations and they have to work underneath a physical therapist. So the PT establishes a plan of care and the PTA follows that plan of care. Within the physical therapy field, there are occupational therapists. Let's hear from a local occupational therapist about her career in OT. Occupational therapy practitioners work with patients to help them do the things that they need to do in a day. So technically, any activity that you do throughout the day is an occupation. You got that right. Things like brushing your hair, washing your face and teeth, cooking a meal, socializing with a friend, playing an instrument, those are all occupations that we use to help our patients heal. The schooling required to become an OT, you have a couple different options. You could become an OT assistant or an OT. To be an assistant, it is an associate's degree, so something like Kirkwood would offer. To become an OT, you could either get a master's or a doctorate level degree. For either of those, you have to have a bachelor's degree, four years typically, and then for a master's, it's usually about two and a half years on top of that, and for a doctorate, it's closer to three years on top of that. Clinically, the main difference between an OT and an OTA or an OT assistant is that OT assistants can't evaluate patients. They can only treat them. So an OT has to be the person to meet the patient for the first time and kind of establish 
what do we need to work on with this patient? What can we do with them? And what goals do we have for this patient? Now let's hear about careers within the radiation sciences field, specifically about a career as a radiologic technologist. A radiologic technologist is a person who takes x-rays to aid in the diagnosis of disease. It's hard to get bored in x-ray. Um, not only do we take over 200 different examinations of the human body, we also have other types of x-ray paths that you could follow. A nuclear medicine, a nuclear medicine is in fact a, a reversal of what we do in x-ray. In x-ray, we send the uh, radiation to the patient to create a picture. But in nuclear medicine, we actually have the patient uh, eat radioactive material or we inject it into their veins and then they become radioactive, which we gather information from. Magnetic Renaissance Imaging, or MRI, looks similar to a CAT scan, but we don't use x-rays, we use magnetic energy. Computed tomography takes x-ray slices of the human body. Mammography is my field of specialty. Um, it's the imaging of uh, women's breast tissue. Sonography uses sound waves to create pictures. And finally, cardiac catheterization and interventional radiology. How can you prepare for a career in radiation science? So if this is something that's interesting to you, how are you gonna prepare yourself? In high school, you can take math, science, any physics, anatomy and physiology or biology classes getting some healthcare experience. So volunteering at a hospital or a clinic or a nursing home, complete a CNA course or work as a CNA or some sort of nursing assistant, and then job shadowing. Here specifically at uh, the University of Iowa, three-year professional programs, everyone that starts in a class, they're gonna take their first two years of classes as an RT program. And then their senior year, their third year, then that's when they would specialize in either CT, MRI, cardiovascular interventional, or breast imaging. For the sonography students, um, there's two different tracks. So there's general and vascular. So they learn basically everything but the heart and, and the vascular system. And then there's a cardiac track where they learn the heart and the vascular system. Next, let's hear about careers in dentistry. What do we actually do? The bread and butter starts with exams and x-rays. So we have to be able to diagnose a problem and then create a treatment plan that includes the teeth, the gums, and the jaws. We administer anesthetic. We can also prescribe antibiotics if there is an infection. As a dentist, we can clean teeth. We remove and fill cavities. We can repair or remove damaged teeth via crowns and bridges, implants, and dentures. We can straighten teeth either through bracket and wire orthodontics, which you have to do some continuing education to do, or Invisalign, which you also have to do some continuing education to do, but that's a great service to be able to offer to your patients in your office. We also do cosmetic procedures like veneers, and we teach and advocate for our patients. So oral hygiene instruction is a big part of what we do. We can do a ton of beautiful work for a patient, but at the end of the day, if they don't know how to take care of it, then we'll be right back where we started in six months. Things start out and you get your high school diploma. Um, from there, you attend college and then it's dental school. And then after dental school, we are required to do continuing education. Another thing you have to do in order to go to dental school is to take the dental admissions test, which is called the DAT. It's similar to the MCAT for medicine and the LSAT for law. It is a test that is broken down into four sections. You're allowed four and a half hours. When it comes to careers in dentistry, there are several paths that you can take. I am a general dentist, which means that I have training in all of these specialty areas, but also that I have the power and the option to refer to specialists when I see that is 
required. If you decide to pursue a career in a dental specialty, you are required to do a residency after dental school. So to be a general dentist, you do not have to complete a residency. But if you decide that you want to go into a specialty, it's an additional two to five years of extra training. The average dentist salary in Iowa is approximately $150,000 per year. The salary for a dental hygienist is approximately $72,000 per year. And the average salary for a dental assistant is approximately $36,000 a year. In addition to dentists, dental assistants and dental hygienists are also two very important roles in dentistry. Dental assistants perform a range of tasks related to patient care and administrative clinical work. Dental hygienists clean and polish patients' teeth and educate patients on best dental practices. Hygienists work independently with patients. To be a dental assistant, you need to graduate from an accredited program with a certificate. Dental hygienists need to complete a two-year associate's degree. Last but not least, let's hear from a local professional about his career in chiropractic. Doctors of chiropractic, we trained for years learning to detect and correct areas of interference along the spine that we call subluxation. And the procedure we use to correct the subluxation is called an adjustment. What do we need to do to become a chiropractor? Well, you need to uh, have a high school background in science, math, and language. You got to be able to communicate to people. That's the language side of it. And you also have to have the logical technical skills of math and science. Biology in particular is very, very important. So understanding how biological systems work from the cellular level all the way up to the organism level. Then you do undergraduate work at a college, at least 90 hours minimum. Most colleges, chiropractic schools at this point, just like most medical schools, don't actually require a degree in undergraduate. You need to have a certain minimum of hours. Most people going into chiropractic school have a bachelor's degree, either a bachelor of arts or bachelor of science degree before they enter into chiropractic school, which is a three and a third year program. So it's a 10 trimester program, three trimesters a year. Thank you for watching this video on healthcare careers. This is not meant to be an inclusive list of all careers within this pathway. We hope one of the clips shown in this video may have sparked a potential career interest. If so, please visit our WLC YouTube channel by clicking the link in the video description to view a library of all our career speaker recordings.